Hello booktube. Today is the last day, uh, Friday of January and so it's time for my January book haul. So in December while I, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for uh, what Christmas money I was picking up I debated with myself whether I wanted to, to get more history uh, which was a theme of December. I started off with some science fiction and fantasy, but quickly picked up more history as the month went on. So, did I want more science fiction and fantasy? Did I want to pick up more history? And I had three pre-orders already ready to go um, that I had pre-ordered for months, and those were all history. So, I think in a way that kind of tipped the balance, but to be honest, none of the science fiction and fantasy books I had my eye on were doing it for me quite as much as the um, history books I had my eye on, all of whom I am excited to have in my collection. So, let's get started. So, the first four books I picked up in January all came from Amazon. First up is The Husband Hunters by Anne de Courcy. This is a history of um, American heiresses uh, marrying into the British aristocracy. Uh, very similar to um, in Downton Abbey. The current Countess of Grantham is an American heiress who married um, into the Oh, I'm blanking on the name of the family. But anyway, but that's basically what happened. I'm looking forward to getting to that. I've had my, uh, my eye on that book for ages. It's actually one of the earliest ones I added into research. So the next three are all 2020 releases. First up is If Then... Um, how the Simulmatics Corporation Invented the Future by Joe Lepore. So, in the course of 2020, I fell in love with Joe Lepore's work. I read um, These Truths and absolutely loved it. And then read um, The Secret History of Wonder Woman and was blown away. I like the, the, That reading experience was so magical, so wondrous, that I'm thinking... I'm going to hunt down everything by Joe Lepore and add it to my collection. Uh, next up is a book I actually had pre-ordered in November, but ended up supplanting this book along with all the other books I had pre-ordered in November for a very heavy science fiction and fantasy month. And that book is Magic, A History from Alchemy to Witchcraft from the Ice Age to the Present by Chris Gostin. So when I talked myself out of keeping up with the pre-order in November, I was afraid the book was going to be a little bit of woo-woo or a little too credulous. But the more I thought about it, the more I read um, reviews of the book, I thought that, I mean, I am hit interested in the history of magic and also um, as a fantasy writer, um, this book would probably be incredibly helpful, even with the woo-woo. So, quite happy to have it in my collection, and I'm looking forward to reading it. And the fourth book uh, from the first round of my book buying for January is A World Beneath the Sands, the Golden Age of Egyptology by Toby Wilkerson. Wilkinson. Um, so this is a history of um, Egyptology, probably from the late 19th century to the early 20th century. And this is the period that I am very much interested in. I mean, I am very interested in the ancient world, ancient Egypt, the Near East, but I'm also interested in sort of the history of the archaeology of these cultures as well. 
and I'm quite happy and excited to have this book in my collection. So the next book I picked up is not over here. I think it all to heck. I will be right back. So the next book I picked up is the first of the um, pre-orders. Uh, Black Wave by Kim Goddess. Um, I read this book early last year when it uh, first came out in hardcover from my local library and this is a history of the conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia and how this conflict has sort of inflamed the region and affected the region for the past 20 40 years um, she also looks at the transition of um, Middle Eastern intellectual interest uh, away from, from Marxism, which typified the mid-20th century to a more fundamentalist Islam after the Iranian Revolution in 1979. So I, so I really enjoyed this book, um, even though if you are uh, judging for the particular run of the Book Prize that this book is part of, Disregard that endorsement, please. But anyway, quite happy to have it in my collection. So the next batch of books I picked up are four, uh, are four from a Libras. Uh, the first book is The Restless Kings, Henry II, His Sons, and the Wars for the Plantagenet Crown by Nick Barrett. Um, I've wanted this book for quite a while. Um, it sounds incredibly interesting and very happy to have it. Uh, sticking with uh, medieval Britain, I picked up uh, Winter King, Henry VII and the Dawn of Tudor England by Thomas Penn. Uh, moving continents and uh, times, um, this vast southern empire, uh, slaveholders at the helm of American foreign policy by Matthew Carp. Um, if you watched my video uh, going on two Mondays ago when I talked about the books I read in January of 2018, um, this, the Vast Southern Empire, was probably the cream of the crop. This was my favorite book that I read it, um, then. Um, it's a history of um, American foreign policy before the Civil War in which um, Southerners dominated and usually sought to defend slavery, to extend it. Um, a part of their vision of Manifest Destiny was to incorporate new slave states, uh, namely by incorporating Cuba as well as Texas, and even before the annexation, annexation of Texas, trying to form a sort of slave state block between the United States led by or sort of encouraged by um, the southern states alongside Texas as well as Brazil and um, the Spanish possessions that still practice slavery. So this book is very interesting and I'm looking forward to getting back to it or rereading it again, although probably not too soon because I've already read two books in the past few weeks that cover the same period. So I think I'm going to take a bit of a break from American history. And the last book from this round of uh, book buying and a Libras is Tombstone, the Great, Chinese, the Great Chinese Famine, 1958 to 1962 by Yang Jixing. Um, so this is a history of a period of um, Chinese history um, by an independent Chinese scholar 
Um, and I picked this up largely because I was very interested in the a book of his that just came out, um, which is The World Turned Upside Down, A History of the Chinese Cultural Revolution, again by Ying Jixin. Um, so this came out oh, a few weeks ago. And when I saw Steve Donahue haul it, I'm, I had to have it. So I immediately pre-ordered it. I think this was the second pre-order of the month. Um, it was this one, uh, was the second one, the last, one of the last ones will be the first and, um, Black Wave was the third, but anyway, but I'm super excited to have this and I'm looking forward to reading it. So alongside, um, the world turned upside down, I decided to pre-order another book. Um, because while I had three pre-orders ready to go at the beginning of the month, I added two during the month. So this one I've seen on Steve's channel and also um, Alan Braswell of The Lonely Bookshelf uh, read it a few weeks ago and really enjoyed it, which um, excited me to pick it up and to read it. And that is The Crown and Crisis, Countdown to the Abdication by Alexander Barman. So this is a history of um, the abdication of Edward VIII. And I'm super looking forward to it. Now, the thing about the world turned upside down and the crown and crisis is how they came. So normally, um, or lately, um, Amazon's pre-orders have been shipped via UPS. And normally UPS delivers in the early mid afternoon, about two to five. The Tuesday when the world turned upside down and the Crown of Crisis was released, um, the uh, UPS didn't actually arrive until about 8.30 in the, that night. And by that point, I was a frazzled mess. I'm like, where is this book? What's going on? But they eventually did um, deliver it, and so I was quite happy about that. Um, and the next day, I got a uh, shipment from Alibris. I ordered another batch of books from Alibris. Now, first up is A History of the Vikings, well, Children of Ash and Elm, A History of the Vikings by Neil Price. I've wanted this book for quite a while, and... Amazon really didn't have a copy of it, or they'd run out of copies or something weird. And what they had was far more expensive than I wanted to pay for it. So I went ahead and picked it up from Libras, which had a relatively cheap copy. I'm quite happy to have it. Looking forward to it. I also picked up uh, The Black Prince of Florence by Catherine Fletcher. Um, this is a biography of Alessandro de' Medici, and I wanted to pick this up because I read earlier, or midway last year, um, The Beauty and the Terror by Catherine Fletcher and loved it, and I'm looking forward to reading other things by her as well. And the third book in that this part of the um, Alibris Order is Lakota America by Pika Hamalainen. Um, it's a history of the um, Lakotas, a Native American tribe um, that I think Brian O'Bookish read earlier or latish last year and really enjoyed. And I'm like, I really want this book. So I picked it up. And I'm also looking forward to picking up his uh, history of the Comanches as well. And finally, the first pre-order and the last pre-orders of uh, for, for January. So first up is The Hundred Years War on Palestine, A History of Settler Colonialism and Resistance, 1917 to 2017, or uh, by Rashid Khalidi. Um, I picked this up uh, because I saw it um, 
long listed for the Kendo Prize. And I thought the book uh, sounded fascinating and super excited to get to it. And finally, and sticking to the region, um, The Last Shah, America, Iran, and the Fall of the Pahlavi Dynasty by Ray Takei, um, which is a history of um, the end of the Pahlavi Dynasty in Iran. And super excited to get to it. It sounds very fascinating. Put that back on the hardcovers. So that's those are the books I picked up in January. I'm super excited for all of them, and I can't wait to get to them. Although it might be a while for some of them. I think I'm probably going to be read one of them uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Um, but anyway, so now it's time to do some pyramids. I don't think I'll be able to do um, just one pyramid. <laughs> so these are the hard covers. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do, I'm not going to be able to do them separately. So again, the hard covers. Oh, the funny thing about um, the Hundred Years' War on Palestine and the Last Shah, um, I said earlier that lately Amazon's pre-orders have been shipped with UPS, but the Last Shah actually shipped with the post office. Um, and the driver actually forgot about it until about, probably he started his... Um, afternoon route, which is something he has a habit of doing. And then the Hundred Years War in Palestine shipped by UPS. I have no idea why they didn't ship together, but anyway. And this one actually showed up a little bit earlier than um, most UPS packages show up. So these are the paperbacks I picked up. Now I need to separate them into alphabetical order and catalog them and then put them on my bookshelf. Anyway, so next month's uh, haul will probably be smaller. Um, I kind of sort of had a bit of a wanting to pick up some science fiction and fantasy, but I think I'm going to stick with history. Um, the histories books that are coming out in February that I've pre-ordered, I have three. I'm all I'm super excited about. Uh, one of them, the first one that'll come in, I saw about a week ago on supposedly Fun's channel, and I'm super excited for that one. And then there's one that I've wanted for about a year that I waited for the paperback to come out. And then there's a huge one that's uh, going to limit how many books that I'll pick up. So I'm thinking the next, so February's haul, I'm thinking will be t six books. But it might be more depending if I want to splurge. But anyway, booktube, I'm going to sign off for now. And I will be, I will be back later with uh, weekly reads. So until then, thank you, booktube. Have a great afternoon and please stay safe.